Ian, Savannah, Aubrey, and Anson. All right. Today we are presenting our plan to monitor the St. George Rainway co-benefits, in particular the positive effects that green rainwater infrastructure, also referred to as GRI, has on urban heat island mitigation and biodiversity. Biodiversity is the amount and variation of species present, and urban heat island, otherwise known as UHI, is the effect where urban areas are warmer than rural ones due to the present of heat presence of heat absorbent services. Through monitoring these co-benefits, we hope to create metrics of success for the rainway. We have chosen these as they are often neglected in monitoring plans due to their complexity. Our plan hopes to address this information gap as well as use this data to infer other co-benefits such as human health. We have chosen three monitoring methods for biodiversity and two for UHI that we think are most applicable to the rainway. For biodiversity, we propose the use of quadrats, a rapid biodiversity assessment and citizen science. A quadrat is a square frame with a grid that can be used to isolate an area of vegetation or ground. And by counting plant species or slow moving organisms within a quadrat, we can estimate the percent vegetation cover or the total number of species in that area. A rapid biodiversity assessment uses traps to catch our the pods like insects, which are then counted and classified according to their morphological traits or their external structure, such as an organism size or how many legs it has. And since they are so abundant, arthropods would be an excellent indicator of overall biodiversity in the rainway. For citizen science, many web applications like iNaturalist have been developed to disseminate information on plants and animals. Their platform has freely accessible and shareable data from all over the world, including Vancouver, and as such could be an effective tool to assess biodiversity while also encouraging public engagement in GRI projects. For UHI, we recommend using fixed stations and mobile transects. Fixed stations would involve installing sensors at stationary locations like electrical poles or trees along the rainway that can record temperature changes in the area over time. And mobile transects refer to when sensors are instead attached to people, bikes, vehicles uh, that can move while collecting data on, along a specific route which will then show how temperature changes spatially. And so the combined use of these two methods allow us to collect temperature data that is represented both over time and space. And we hope that the use of all these monitoring methods will eventually help us infer how human health is impacted by biodiversity and the urban island effects in the long term. As for the next steps, we hope that our monitoring plan can demonstrate that the St. George Rainway has been a success by showing decreased UHI effect and increased biodiversity. And we also want to use this to encourage public acceptance of a green rainwater infrastructure with measurable co-benefits. Uh, however, we hope that our work goes even further by providing guidance for future GRI projects and help our communities adapt to climate change impacts. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thanks team. So there's a question from Julie in the chat. Did you give any thoughts to how you would recruit people to complete the citizen science components? Yeah, I can answer to that. Um, actually, as we're writing our final report, we're getting a little bit more detail into how that recruitment will work. And also looking at the public engagement side of these projects uh, gave me a couple ideas. So thank you to all those groups. Uh, but I was thinking about doing uh, like flyers with handouts of species lists and uh, kind of getting people started and having something tangible in their hands. And those species lists are based off of other um, sightings in the area from apps such as eBird or iNaturalist. And on those flyers, we'd also provide like a QR code that would link to those apps. When you are looking for the species, you can download the app and record them. So hopefully that would be a good starting point as long with the additional signage if possible. Thanks, Savannah. Chris is asking what kind of traps are used uh, in rapid biodiversity assessment? Yeah, I can answer that one. Um, so again, doing more research now for our final proposals. Um, I've found that pitfall traps would be pretty practical to capture the arthropods on the ground in the soil and living on plants. It's basically a trap in the soil that has like a mesh top on. So when the insects crawl on in it, they fall through and then um, there's a liquid that would basically inhibit them from getting back out. And then there's also window traps that are basically a stake that can be put in the rainway and has reflective um, plastic that can be different colors that could attract flying insects. And again, they would be attracted to the colors and then fall into a trap with a liquid that would inhibit them from getting out. Thanks, Aubrey. 
Another question from Julie, do the quadrat assessments look at vegetation only or does it also include other critters? Yeah, I can answer that one too. Um, so we are going to suggest to just use the quadrats to focus on vegetation. Um, since during our research, we found using quadrats to um, assess for critters, especially mobile critters can be hard and inaccurate. Um, because it could be in the transect at one point and then run out and then that affects the data. So we are suggesting to just stick with vegetation since it is stationary and we can then make sure we have an accurate assessment. Thanks again, Aubrey. Any, question, any other questions from the audience for this team? All right, thank you very much, everyone. Um, and uh, I should say too, if we have time at the end, I'll open it up for more general questions about the projects, um, if anyone has any that come to mind. 